Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Rooted Sunday School class this morning. I hope we can be a blessing to you this morning. You may tune in and watch the live stream and maybe tune in later and catch the Sunday School lesson. I pray the Lord help us be a blessing. And these times with we're just going to trust in the Lord. Amen. Let's begin off with a word of prayer this morning. Maybe some people will hop on and Tune in to the, the <laughs> let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you, Lord God, for all your many blessings, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege, Lord God, to teach the Sunday school class this morning, Lord. I pray, Lord, you'd help us, Lord God, to be that blessing, Lord, that you, you want us to be this morning, Lord. I pray, Lord, you just help us in a great and mighty way. Anoint us from on high, Lord God. Give us that that you need us to. To speak this morning, Lord, I pray, Lord, that we can be a help and an encouragement to these the people in these times, Lord God. We thank you and praise you, Lord God, for all that you do. For in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. If you want to turn your Bibles this morning to the book of Psalms, we'll read a few verses out of the book of Psalms 25 this morning. When we begin our Sunday school lesson. Psalms 25 and verse number 4 it says, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Now we'll turn our Bibles over to the second Peter, and I'll read a verse out of it this morning. In verse in chapter number 1 of Second Peter, in verse number 12, it says, Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. So here we see this morning that we need to be stirred up and be put in remembrance of what God's done for us. In these days, I mean, there's there's all kinds of uncertainty, but there's one thing that's certain this morning. That, hey, God's still on His throne, amen. We can still got a, a Heavenly Father that loves us, amen. We still got a Bible. We still got truth, amen, that we can look at. But Peter was telling his his followers and all that, he says, I, and while I'm in this tabernacle, while he's in his body, while he was st still alive, he said, I'm going to stir up some remembrance in you. I want to stir up what God has done for you in, in this present life that we're living in. In this present day and hour that we're living in, hey, we, we may not know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what all is going on with this coronavirus and all this is going on. But guess what? We still got a God that loves us. Amen. And we can get stirred up in the remembrance. Hey, I, I still remember on April 4th, 2010, when God saved my soul. When he said, hey, I love you this much, so I laid down my life for you. Hey, amen. I, I, didn't, I didn't live a life that was worthy to be saved of. Amen. But guess, guess what? He still loved me enough. He said, hey, I'll save you. And I can still put in remembrance, hey, since that day forth, since that new life began in me, guess what? I started living an abundant life. I started living a life in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. No matter what trials may come, no matter what tests come my way, guess what? I still have got a God that loves me, amen. He said he'll never leave me nor forsake me. He says in, in Psalms 25, it says, Lead me in thy truth and teach me. There's some things that we should be teaching in this life that, hey, we got a God that loves us. we got a God that says, hey, I, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's the truth that we have today. I mean, we can turn on the news, and guess what? We can look at fake news all day long. I mean, it's amazing. The, the stuff that they want to put out is real news and it's fake. But guess what? we got a God of all truth. I mean, we don't know what all has been going on with this. We don't know how serious it really is or how not serious it is. But guess what? we got a holy Bible right here that we can lean on, amen, that we can actually trust in, amen. I can look on these pages and believe every word of it, every... Every period, every exclamation mark, every question mark, everything that's in this Bible, I can trust. You know why? Because my God says he cannot lie. Amen. He's going to tell the truth always. Even to the end of the world, guess what? His word's truth. 
It don't matter what's going on in this world, guess what? He's still alive and well, amen. A lot of people want to think he's dead and gone and ain't risen from the dead, but guess what? He's alive and he's he's living in me today, amen. I can testify to that truth that he's within me, amen. And he, he shows us his ways. He teaches. He says in Psalms 25 verse 4, it says, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. There's some things when I was lost, I didn't know how it was to live the Christian life. I didn't know what what kind of enjoyment I could have out of it. When I looked at those people that go to church day in and day out, I said, those people's crazy. They're going to worship with somebody they can't see. They're going to worship with somebody they can't hear. They're going to worship with somebody they don't, they don't even know where he's at. But that's just what, as soon as I give my life to him, hey amen, he started showing me his ways. He started showing me his past. He started showing me, hey, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, amen. And guess what? He started putting truth in my life. He started showing me, hey, I can trust in him. And he started showing me his path that he has for me in his life. I mean, we can just look at all, all these things going on around us. But hey, we still got a truth this morning. We still got a God that loves us. We still got a God that says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He's, he's wanting to show us his ways. He's, he's slowed America down, amen. He's put people back in their homes. He's put... He's put Mama's <laughs> taking care of the youngest. He's put the daddy's back over the head of the house. I mean, he's done all these things. And people think it's, it's the worst thing in the world. I still got a Bible, amen. I still got, I, the Lord's slowing America down. He's putting the families back in their homes. He's, he's putting the order back in. <laughs> amen. I mean, people may think it's the worst thing in the world. I think it may have been one of the greatest blessings we may have ever had in America. That God's slowing us. That he showed us His path that He has for us. He's showing us that, hey, we can rely on Him. He's showing America, hey, you need to get back on your knees and start praying. You need to get back with your families and start worshiping me in spirit and in truth. Yeah, he's trying to show the Christians, hey, you can go way off path. I mean, you sit there and you go, you go way off path. I need to get you back to where you need to be. I need to get you back with your family. I need to get you back to those things that matter most in your life. I need to get you back in the Word of God. I need to get you back on your knees, worshiping in spirit and in truth. I need to get you back to praying. I need to get you back to those things that really matter in your life. You know, as Christians, we go to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and we sit there and we look at all those things. Every time we go to how many times have we taken those times for granted? How many times have we, we said, I'm going to church, but we didn't really want to go to church? How many times have we set foot in the church doors and said, hey, this, I, you mind's down at Hardy's, your mind's down at the Bojangles and everywhere else. You're sitting there, you think about what you're going to eat for lunch and everything else. You think about what the NASCAR race is going to be coming on after, after church. You're thinking about everything else but God. He said to show me thy, thy paths. He said, show me thy paths, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth. And teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. I mean, he, he'll teach us what we need to do. He'll teach us during these times what we need to really be trusting in. What we really need to be relying on. I mean, a lot of people lost their jobs during all this. But you know what? We sitting there, we can lose our job. Was your faith more in that job than in God in heaven that you serve? Is your faith more in what you had in your bank account? Is your faith more in what you have? Is your faith more? I mean, during these times, guess what? He's putting, he's showing us what our, our trust really lies in in these times. Is it really relying on the God in heaven Is it by what you can do? down at the job? Or is it more about what you can do because of what you have in your bank account? Now, a lot of people's bank accounts got drained when that stock market crashed and everything else. You know what? They had their trust in. They had their trust in, in the monetary gains of this world. They had their trust. Their, their trust wasn't relying on the God of heaven to put food in their mouth. Their trust was in their bank accounts. Their trust was in that car they had sitting in their driveway or that big fancy house that they live in. Me as a construction worker, I get to work on some big houses. I work on some of the biggest houses <laughs> that I've 
ever seen in my life. But you know what? There's maybe one family or two people living that big, massive house. But all their trust is in what they're, what they're, I mean, they may be in their third and fourth marriage. They may, they may have all the money in the world, but they ain't got a family, amen. All their trust is, is, is what they have. The, bait, the, the boats that they go out on the lake in. And everything else in this world, where's their trust really at? Their trust was in their money. And the Bible says you can't, you can't serve man and you can't serve God. You Which one are you going to serve? You're going to serve mammon, which is money and everything else, or you're going to serve God. He says to show me thy ways. His ways are straight. His way, you can't sit there and do crooked business and everything else and think, hey, you're right with God. You can't sit there and deal crookedly with people and think, hey, you're right with God. You can't sit there and do everything across ways and everything else. You need to be straight. He says, I will show you my ways. He, the Lord didn't ever do anything crossways or anything crooked, anything underhanded or anything else. Guess what? It's all out and open. He made it all plain and straight. He said, hey, I will show you my ways. But hey, we've got to be willing to learn His ways. We've got to be willing to, to take the advice that He gives us. We need to be willing to take godly counsel, amen, when He needs to show it to you in your life. There should be somebody in your life that, hey, that shows you the way, amen. If you ain't got nobody to rely on, guess what? You got this book that you can rely on. This book can tell you how to be a good husband. This book can tell you how to be a good father. This book can show you how to be a good wife. This book can show you how to be a good mother. This book can show you how to be a good grandparent. This book can show you everything that you ever need to know. But you got to be willing to get in this book. You got to be willing for the Lord to show you and direct thy paths. You got to be willing for the Lord to teach you. Have you ever tried to teach somebody that's unteachable? You ever try to teach somebody that thinks they know everything? Amen. I mean, I, in the line of work I, I work in, I come across all kinds of people that they think they know how to work a, a shovel, amen. And then they come out on the job and you tell them, hey, go dig that out over there. Go dig a hole. He say they ain't never held a shovel a day in their life. But you know what's failed in this, this day and hour that we live in? The dead is. Ain't teaching the sons how to work, amen. They ain't showing them the things of life, amen. They ain't showing them how to go out in the yard and cut the grass. They ain't you know what they do? They go out and hire everything out. They don't want to be willing to teach their sons to do anything. I mean, I, I, I remember just the other month, I let Jay run the lawnmower, amen. And he said, there, I, I was worried to death that boy was going to cut his feet off, cut his toes off, cut, cut everything off that he had on his body. But you know what? I had to let go of the reins a little bit and say, hey, if this boy is ever going to work, he's going to have to learn early how to work and how to work th tools and everything else and put and put the lawnmower in his hands. i got to let go of the reins and say, hey, he needs to learn some hands-on experience. I don't want to wait till he's 20-something till he's years old, lazy as, as, as anything else, not worth two cents to nobody. But you know what? We've got to be willing to teach. I mean... If we if we gotta be willing to teach our youngest how to work, amen, and do those things, how is we as parents not be willing for God of all heaven to teach us how to be good parents, or to be, teach us how to be good co-workers, to how teach us how to how to run a business in a godly way, and everything else? Tell us how to, how we need to act when we're around people. Tell us when to keep our mouth shut. Tell us when to sit there and say amen. <laughs> when Sunday when the preacher's sitting there doing. Teaching and preaching the way he needs to, amen. And what where's those things at that teaches us in our lives? Lord, it says to, He says, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. We gotta be willing to get on that path that God wants us to be on. We gotta be willing to follow his steps. We gotta be willing to follow his Holy Spirit when it leads us to hey, to, to, to put a little bit of extra money in the offer plate. To put a little extra money here or there to help some missionary or something else or to help the preacher out, amen. When's the last time you listened to the Holy Spirit on your giving? When's the last time you listened? I don't know why in the world I got on this. I don't usually get on it. But when when do you when's the last time you listened to God when he told you to hey put a little bit of extra money in the plate? You opened your wallet up and said, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to be able to eat this morning, this week if I put this in. But you know what? Won't you trust Him? 
Because once you start putting your trust in Him, they start guiding your paths, amen. You don't, you ain't relying on your, on your wallet that's in your back pocket that's got you sitting a whole lot and everything else, amen. You ain't relying on those credit cards you got in your pocket. Guess what? You're trusting in God. Trusting in that path that He has for you. I mean, since all these things happen, I, I can't even begin to explain how God's blessed us. And, and, and it's just obeying God. Obeying what He has for us in our lives. But you know what? You've got to be willing to, 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 to trust in Him, to be able to follow His steps that He has for you in your life. I mean, Peter, he, his tail is blue. He said, I want to stir. He says, while I'm alive, hey, God's been good to us. God's been good to America. God's been a whole lot better to America than he probably should be, amen. I mean, sitting there, you, you look at the abortion rates and everything else and, and everything in this, in this country and the homosexuality and all the abominations and everything else, but there's still a remnant. There's still a remnant that loves God. There's still, and those ones that love God, guess what? They need to be stirred up. They need to stir, hey, our God's not dead this morning. We serve a living God. He directs our paths. He shows us what we need to do. He shows us everything in our life. That, hey, we may be crossed with somebody. He shows us those things that we need to get right in our lives. I mean, He directs our paths. He shows us what we need to do. He says, Peter is saying, I need to stir up some remembrance in you how good God is to you. You know, God's a whole lot better than us we'd ever deserve. If we think we, need, we deserve, we deserved our backs broke and thrown off into hell not to be remembered for anymore. But yet we had a loving God that loved us enough and said, hey, I'll go to Mount Calvary. I'll lay my life down, amen. And I'll pick it back up that third and glorious day, amen. And I'll I, I send up into heaven and I'll sit on the right hand of God make intercessions for you and all the, who believe in me. Amen. That's the God we serve. Oh, sometimes we need to be stirred back in remembrance. Hey, we need to be stirred back to life, amen, and said, hey, God loves you this morning. You may, you may tune into this live stream and everything else, and you may be lost and on your way to hell, but there's a God that loves you this morning. There's a God that wants to direct your paths this morning. There's a God that, that loves you. You may have somebody, you may not have nobody in your life that loves you this morning, but get, guess what? There's a God in heaven that loves you this morning. There's a God in heaven that laid down his life and he died for you this morning. There may be somebody that will come across this that's never even heard a, a Sunday school lesson, never heard a preacher preach, and never heard anything about God in their whole life. But guess what? God loves you this morning. That may be, you may be a word you ain't heard in a very long time, but somebody loves you. But guess what? God loves you. He loves you this morning. He wants to direct your paths. He wants to take you off that crooked path. He wants to put you on that straight path. He wants to take you off that path of destruction. He wants to take you. I mean, during these times of this, this coronavirus and everything else, they said that alcohol sales has grown up 300%. I mean, they said, and all this thing is going on in people's lives. They have no hope. They have no peace. They have no rest. They rely on everything that this world has to offer, but yet... They ain't got somebody that tells them, hey, there's somebody that loves you this morning. There's a God in heaven that loves you. That, that wants to get a hold of your life. That's sitting there, sitting there drawing you this morning. It says, hey, I love you this much. That I was willing to go to Calvary to pay for your sin. The sin that, that you should have died for. The sin that you're going to go to hell for. But yet I laid it all on Calvary so that you wouldn't have to pay that ransom. So that you wouldn't have to pay that penalty. Then still this morning, the wages of sin is death. But there's a God in heaven. Amen. I mean, we can start with, the wages of sin is death. There's no hope there. <laughs> but, the man is but the gift of God is eternal life. And it's a free gift this morning. He wants to direct your paths. He wants to lead you in the ways of righteousness. He wants to get a hold of your life and do something with your life. You say, well, well, preacher, I don't have no hope. I have no peace. I have no rest. This is all you need. This is, this is our hope. This is our peace. I mean, the Word of God is sure, amen. 
It can tell you what you need this morning. It can show you the life that you live in. The life that ain't right. And there's, there's some times in your life that say, hey, God gets a hold of you. And he starts stirring up some remembrance in your life. That, hey, maybe you had a mama that prayed for you. That you had a daddy that prayed for you. That you had some grandparents praying for you. And then they're sitting there, and he starts stirring up those times in your life that you listen to your grandmother or your mother get down on her knees and start praying for you. Once you do something in my youngest life, once you get a hold of their life, don't you don't let them go in the ways of wickedness, Lord, Lord. Don't you get a hold of them. And when you sit there and that old, old pot gets to stir, and amen, and God starts to stir those things up in your life, starts remembering those times in your life that you heard those people pray for you. And he's sitting there saying, hey, all those people pray for you. All these person pray for you. And you're sitting there, and all of a sudden, that, that, that pot gets to remember, and God starts working up that heart in your life. And you, that heart starts to begin to melt. That heart starts to begin to break. And then he starts getting broke down for God. And guess what? He starts to stir you in that path of righteousness in your life. He wants to show you the way that you're living ain't right. He wants to get a hold of your life this morning. He wants to say, he wants to stir up remembrance of you. He says, leave me in thy truth and teach me. Are you willing to be taught this morning? Are you willing to be say, hey, I'm going to surrender all my life to him. I'm going to surrender everything to him. Leave me in thy path, O oh God. Oh, oh David, he's sitting here, he, he say, he's telling me his trust is in the Lord. He says, show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy paths. Are you willing for the Lord to show you your ways in your life? Are you willing for him to show you those things that, that, that may be, need to be corrected in your life? Those, those pot, spots in your life that, hey, that God ain't got control of? You know, when he, when he bought us, amen, he bought all of us <laughs> with his precious blood. That word precious means well, you can't even put a price tag on it. You can't put a price tag on what God done for us. You know, everybody these days, they want to put a price tag on everything. <laughs> and then the price tag they want to put on it, they want to put on it a, a big price, amen. They want to get the most they can out of what, what, they, what they can get. I mean, it's the day and hour we live in. I mean, it's the day and hour we live in. Everybody wants... <laughs> That they want to say the, the cheapest thing in the world for the biggest dollar amount that they can get. But you can't put a dollar amount on what God done for you. You can't put a dollar amount for him going to Calvary, the sinless, perfect lamb. The one that sit there that left all of heaven. Left all those angels praising him day in and day out. To come down here, to be born in a lowly manger. <laughs> Where they didn't even have no room for him in the end. I mean... In this day and hour we live in, people have no room for Jesus. But it's amazing how God's slowed America down. I mean, it, it, this fast-paced world, all of a sudden it's like it come to a crawl. God's trying to show people his path. We shouldn't be running around like chickens with our heads cut off. No direction, no path. Dead. Usually a chicken with his head cut off is dead, Amen. But a lot of people, they run around, run around as dead men. And dead men's bones and everything. They have no life about them. <laughs> I mean, sitting there, no direction. No way of life. I mean, they think they, they run this way and they run that way. And they run, they're running all over the place. No direction. But the Bible says, show me thy ways. Teach me thy paths. I'm excited this morning. I get, to, I get to go in the house of God, amen, this morning. I ain't actually been in the church house for a couple months. It seems like it's been forever. But we'll get to go worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. May, may these times that we've been going through, may we not forget what we learned during these times. May we not take church for granted. May we not take those those godly examples that God's put in our lives, may we not take those godly examples for granted. May we, may we look to His past that He has us in this morning and trust in Him as He begins to stir 
as He begins to move in our lives, as He as He may be stirring you to, to maybe get saved this morning or something like that, or or who knows, maybe get right, maybe there's something in your life that ain't right that He's telling you that you need to get rid of. May you trust in His path. May you trust in Him. It says, lead me in thy truth and teach me. <laughs> in, in, in Psalm 26, in verse 2, it says, Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. You know what you have in your heart. You may have been having roots of bitterness spring up in your life for, for years and months and, and years upon years. And, and, and you may have those roots of bitterness that's choked every life out of you that you can't grow. And, and your fruit's done rotted on your tree and, none, and you can't help nobody. And then the Lord may be trying to stir you up this morning. It, it stir you up to that, that time that you got saved. That time that, hey, when you couldn't, when you would chase hell with the water pistol, amen. And you would be trying to squirt the devil in the face with that water gun, amen. And everything else. But won't you have some stirring up in your life? Won't you get back to that place and, hey, I remember that morning I would bow down on my knees and I give my life to the Lord. And he, he, he released me of that burden of sin that I had on my life. Maybe you ain't never experienced that release of that sin in your life. Maybe you need to say, hey, I need to be free this morning. You can be free indeed this morning just trusting the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And He'll start beginning to lead you in His past. And He'll start, start showing you the truth that He has for in you and your life. Amen. But He's wanting to get a hold of you. While I'm alive, while I still got breath in my body, amen. I want to tell you how good God's been to this old boy. You know, Paul, he said he was the chiefest among sinners. <laughs> but yet God still loved. I mean, and you take the, the one that persecuted the church of God probably the most. If anybody's ever persecuted the church of God, that would have been, that would have been Saul. But yet, on his way to Damascus with those, those letters in his hand to arrest every Christian, he met the Lord, amen, on that Damascus road. And his life was changed. And God took one of his biggest persecutors and, and made him one of the best preachers he's ever been. God could take the, his greatest enemy and turn him into his greatest asset. What are you willing to let God do in your life? Are you willing to let God use you in a great and mighty way? Are you willing to let him control your life? You say, well, preacher, I ain't going to let nobody control me. There's one that you need to let in your life control everything that you do. Everything that you do in your life from the time you wake up in the morning till you lay your head down at night. There needs to be a God in heaven that I read in your past and showing you in the past of righteousness, that's showing you in all truth, that's showing you in all righteousness in your life. We need to get in this book. We need to let him show us. We need to let him say, hey, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Who's that by me? That's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the one that laid his life down on Calvary. That's the one that shed his life's blood for you so you can have life and have it more abundantly. He is the door. He's the great shepherd. He's the true vine. He's the bright and morning star this morning. He's the one that can give you life and you can have it more abundant this morning. You just got to put your trust in him. Bow down on your knees and give your life to the Almighty God. And let Him try your reins. He knows what's in your heart. Won't you give Him those secret places that you have off in your heart? Give Him those things that you have that you thought you had control of, but some got control of you. Give them all to Him. And you'd be a blessing to somebody else today. Maybe you need to call up somebody and apologize to them or who knows what. Why don't you let the Lord lead you this morning? Maybe stir you up a little bit. Help you this morning in a great and mighty way. Let us pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your son that was willing to go to Calvary, Lord God, to pay our sin debt. But I pray, Lord, that we we'll never forget that may you always stir up remembrance in us what you've done for us and how, how good you are to us each and every day. I thank you, Lord God, for loving us. 
I thank you, Lord God, for being so good to us. For Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.